All right, so today, well, depends why you're watching it, was the Australian National Championships in time trialing. Now, pretty exciting to always see, you know, who's going well early in the season. Interesting to see how the World Tour people stack up against the domestic Australians. So we'll go through the wins first. So Georgia, uh, sorry, Grace Brown won it. Um, Sarah Gigante, who won it last year, wasn't competing. Uh, pretty decent, decent speed, 41K an hour. There's not too much data from either the men's or women's, unfortunately, um, which is a bit, a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. So this is a women's ride. Georgia Howe, who finished like fourth, about a minute back. Did three and a half watts per kilo, 42 minutes. So pretty strong, actually. Um, good speed as well. Like CDA must be pretty low because doing like 40K an hour and 250 watts on like a hilly course is pretty good. Like, as I always say, like CDA on downhills is actually more like you can tell better because like 60K an hour minus 3%, 212 watts. That's pretty good. Like, like that is that is actually very, very solid CDA. Um, in terms of her position, uh, what's the base, uh, Georgia Brown, uh, sorry, Grace Brown, this is the only photo I could find. Looks like she's got some integrated bar and stem here. Lapia disc brake TT bike. Says Shimano, but I'm pretty sure it's a Roval um, 321 rear wheel and Durace front wheel, the new C60s, which are R92000. So pretty interesting that she is going for the FD, well, FDJ women seem to be going with that. Obviously, Stefan Kung has used some different wheels in the past. So maybe that's just because it's what she had in Australia and all the rest of it. And then maybe, sorry, in the future, she'll go for a different one. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, there's not really much more data. Uh, we can go over to the men's, and again, there's there's also not too much data here, but I think, you know, we'll be able to have a little analysis because there's some better pictures taken, luckily. But, again, it'd be great if we got some better picture quality of this. So, anyway, Rowan Dennis did win it um, by a minute, which, on a 45-minute TT, is pretty significant. Like, it's not huge, but it is pretty decent. Against Durbridge, who has done well in the past, Connor Lay, big ride, and everyone else is, like, pretty far back, to be honest. Um, which I guess is fair enough. I mean, it is against Rowan Dennis. So we're going to look at uh, Connor Leahy's power data. So he finished third. So he 400 normalized for 48 minutes. Again, very, very strong. He's a big boy for sure. 84 kilos. So what's per kilo wise, not bonkers. But then the thing is, I think now especially people have realized what's per kilo wise, yeah, sure, it's not bonkers. But that must mean his CDA is pretty good because 400 watts like is, is solid. Um, but to go 47k an hour, obviously his CDA is good. Again, we can see on some of these parts, this is a slight uphill, but 45k an hour still. And again, on the downhill, we can see what it does. Um, it's only 310 watts, but 67k an hour is always shows that, you know, you're going well. Um, so again, like CDA 69k an hour, 370 watts is, is decent again. So it, what would Dennis be doing? I don't know, probably I'd, I'd hazard a guess of 20 watts more maybe, um, and more error, I'd say, because, you know, but maybe not like a minute more is not is is decent but it's probably over a long period it's probably not that much could only be 10 watts more but just more aero could even be the same power but just more aero um i think dennis is super super slippery but we're going to get onto that in a minute uh because we've got some good photos because obviously there's a big change of equipment going on luke durbridge as well we'll go into so we'll hop over now into some of the pictures now they seem to take pictures on the corner which is very odd so anyway you can see um, there's only really two World Tour guys that took part, first and second. So we look here straight up, classic Jumbo Visma, uh, the laser helmet, which is now infamous after Primoz Roglic in 2020 Tour. You can see front wheel, I believe this is a Shimano C60, I could be correct on it. I couldn't, I had a look, good look trying to figure out what it is. I, I whipped up Shimano here, C60, Ugh. I mean it could be it, it does look quite similar, um, but I think it could be deeper. Uh, normally they run the Aerocoach 100mm, which obviously it isn't. Um, and also on further pictures, you'll be able to see the valve cover. So in that case, I'm not sure. Um, and then just standards kit that they um, that Jumbo Visma run. I can't remember what their brand is, but nothing crazy there. Two by rear disc wheel. I'm also is pretty sure is Roval three two one. Uh, I, I believe, or it could be an Aox because actually, if you look at there's a red writing. And I'm pretty sure that if we zoom onto a different one, we'll go to back to Durbridge in a minute. But I think on this uh, this angle here, you can see it sort of says in red like Aox. So I think it could be an Aero coach. Wheel. Anyway, extensions again, nothing crazy, just like basically ski extensions, so straight and then up. Not integrated, which is, to be honest, is fair enough uh, and not too surprising at this point. Obviously, he's on disc brake as well. We'll go quickly to Luke Durbridge and then we'll compare it to Rowan Dennis's old time trial position and see how that compares. So we can see um, Luke Durbridge on some integrated bar and stems. These look like potentially speed bars. He's on a, tra uh, on a giant, sorry, Trinity, which I reckon is like m at least four years old, could be more. They're definitely going to release a new one with disc, I reckon, soon. 
Um, he's gone quad spoke on the front, not a tri spoke, like a quad spoke, and then disc, um, just a classic disc rear wheel. Um, it's got the, always a weird nose cone. It looks a pretty good setup. Uh, I think this giant rivet helmet, I reckon, is one of the slowest helmets on the market. I don't really get it. It's got five holes on the front. I just can't imagine it's that quick. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like it doesn't suit his position. But again, I, I just don't think it's. They would have the R and D of some other people, and it, and it just never looks great. So anyway, having said all that about Rowan Dennis, we're going to have a look at his position. I think this is probably the best way to compare um, versus his old position here. So ultimately, it's not it's not crazy difference. We'll we'll split the screen here so we can we can get a better a better comparison. Uh, but yeah, it's not it's not crazy different, is it? Uh, I think he's obviously a little bit lower at this current position. But if you can remember when he went to Bahrain Merida, he lost it to run uh, to Durbridge, the um, Nationals. And it was I made a video saying like, oh, I don't think his position is as good. I think now it's just different. I think it's a little bit lower. It's probably like he just hasn't been in the wind tunnel on the Cervelo. That would be my honest thing. He, they just gave him a bike. He set it up roughly at the first uh, training camp. If he was even there, I think he must have been there in like December maybe, but he could have literally just been sent it to Australia and has raced on it. But again, you can see with Ineos, he's got like the custom extensions with like the angled spaces because like literally the space is going forward, which is um, quite a crazy thing to do, but that's mainly because Pinarello don't have long enough bikes for big guys. Helmet, again, it's not not that different. Obviously, it's a different brand, but not crazy different. His hands, obviously, he's reaching for the brakes or the um, the drops. So, yeah, basically, um, not surprised. You can't really see what his hand position is, but yeah, it just looks lower. Again, probably just goes to show if you've got legs on the day and an error-ish, you can get around. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, leave me your comments below if you spotted any tech stuff that I didn't. Um, and correct me on any of the wheels or whatever, because I'm pretty sure I got the wheels right, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, should have some more content as uh, with the road race and all the rest of it. So yeah, see you in the next one.